This may be unusual for some people that are watching us like, I thought he would be funny by now. And, and I'm, I'm going to try to do everything. I'm going to try to present God's word in a way that will be engaging and exciting. But the one thing that I never want us to get into as a church is missing God because of the package it comes in. Like, God has been maturing me and putting himself in different packages. That's so good. God's been speaking to me through all kind of stuff. And I used to only could receive God in a certain package. And honestly, that's a sign of immaturity. My daughter Gia can only eat food right now from a breast or a bottle. That's the only way she can receive nourishment. Because if it comes in anything outside of that, she has not matured enough to be able to know how to chew it, cut it up, digest it, or be able to even understand what it is. If I put a steak in front of her right now, she's just going to slap it. <laughs> but when you get older, you're able to receive different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And so today, I believe I'm on assignment to teach you yeah. some things about crazier faith that I'm going to intentionally not be like hype today. Come on. Uh-oh. Why not, Pastor Mike? I want you to get this and not be distracted by anything except the words that are coming out of this message. I'm going to intentionally, and now I can't help myself. I'm going to be myself. But I I, I really want you to get it. Everybody say, I want to get it. Because the next, I see these things in like books and volumes the next like five messages I have to speak are going to blow your mind. Like, cause they done blown mine already. Like it is, hold on, God, wait a minute. Me doing that? Like, ah, that, like it's that type of stuff. But I would be irresponsible as your pastor to give you the license to drive without the parameters to drive in. If I don't give you the parameters and let you know that you gotta stay in your lane and you can't drive into oncoming traffic and you probably should keep your eyes open while you're at the wheel, it's only going to damage you in the long run and not allow you to be able to experience the fullness of what God wants for you. And so today, in week three of a series we're calling Crazier Faith, today I wanna teach you about imagination. Cause last week we unlocked something in y'all. And a lot of people have been imagining all kinds of stuff. How many people right now in the chat, all in the room, how many of you have been imagining yourself at a different place, imagining yourself in different different spheres, as different influence, all, okay. We've been imagining all kinds of stuff. But God told me specifically, Michael, now I need you to go back and tidy some things up to help people understand where their imagination has to be and what it is not. So, um, yeah, let's go on and get into this. Y'all got y'all notes? Y'all ready for this? See, this is the beautiful thing about being the pastor because I show up next week too. And like, I get to walk you through this journey, not just pazow and then go away. Like, I want to walk you. The greatest thing for you is to become spiritually mature and this stuff actually work in your life. I do not want you walking around like, that's my pastor, pastor Mike, my pastor. God is good. And nothing changes in your life. If it doesn't change in your life, there's no proof and no evidence of what we're even talking about. And so today's message is going to help you go deeper and understand the beginnings of what God wants you to do living in crazier faith. Let's go to it. Um, I ran into a high school friend this week. Um, I was at a fast food establishment getting something for my kids because we was fasting. And uh, and I walked up and he was like, Mike Todd, Mike Todd. 
I was like, and I looked at him and I was like, oh snap, I remember you from high school. And he was like, and for some reason he kept saying this. He said, I would have never imagined. I would have never imagined, bro. I would have never imagined you, you. And then I started to get offended. Like, hold on, like, what do you mean? He's like, I would have never imagined. And as I went back to the car, out of every words, he, all the words he could have used, out of everything he could have said, I just finished speaking a message last week on the anointed imagination. And this man keeps saying, I would have never imagined. And I started to examine those words, Joe. I would have never imagined. And something rose up in me and said, why not? Why wouldn't you have imagined? Imagination is free. Imagination can happen in a current situation that does not look like what it looks like, Ray. Why wouldn't you imagine yourself whole? Why wouldn't you imagine yourself free? Why wouldn't you imagine your family together? Why wouldn't you imagine yourself forgiving them? Uh-oh. You won't even imagine. You've imagined yourself being mad at them for the next decade and going to their funeral and sitting there stank faith. But why wouldn't you imagine the great things that God has for you? And something in me said, I will never not imagine the good that God has for me. I will never not imagine it. See, and many of you right now are sitting here as like, well, if I imagine it and then it doesn't happen, then does that like make God a liar? Help, 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 Pastor Mike. I will. The true manner of what you need to know is this. Write this point down. The obedience to believe is my job. But the outcome is his. I don't have to believe and make it happen. My job is to believe God. If he does it or not, he's sovereign. He has the ability to say, yep, I'm going to do it. Nope, because I got something better. You won't understand that. You're not ready for that right now. But my job is to believe. Somebody say, my job, my job. is to believe. believe. Say it with your chest. My job. Is to, is to believe. The truth of the matter is most of you have skipped out on your job. You do not believe God. You will not imagine yourself healthy. You can imagine yourself healthy putting the donut in your mouth. Like you can be sitting with a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts and you can get an image of yourself saying one day, I will not have to go to this for comfort. I'm about to step on some people's toes. You can be sitting there with the blunt and imagine yourself not calling the weed man and having him on speed dial. You can imagine yourself while you're in the bed waiting for them to come temporarily fulfill an insecurity that has been there since you were 14 and you're not even going to remember his name. But you can imagine yourself laying down in a bed that is yours with somebody next to you who loves you and cherishes you. You can imagine that. Somebody say imagine that. I made a decision a long time ago that believing was my job but the outcome is his. And too many people won't believe unless they know the outcome. That's not faith. So today I need you to take a different stance in faith with me. I'm gonna believe no matter what. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what they said, what happened for them, Brian. I'm gonna believe no matter what. They gave me the the diagnosis. They told me what my son would be able to do, but I'm going to believe no matter what. The outcome, his job. Believing, my job. I'm trying to get somebody to understand this because you've been waiting for a guarantee on what you're believing and God's waiting for you to believe no matter the outcome. You're standing in the middle of a situation that can change, but your job is to believe. God's job is the outcome. So what do you do? I obey God. I believe God. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And so as I was talking about imagination last week, and we were looking at 
how we need to be more kiddie and be able to trust God and be able to believe God and obey God and follow God and imagine what God has for us. And we learned that imagination is purified in intercession. It couldn't have come at a better time when we just as a church went in seven days of prayer and fasting. When I'm telling you what God did this week, Tammy, <laughs> what God did this week, Charlie, y'all, the prayer that happened this week changed the trajectory of our church. I can't fully disclose what has happened. But what I'm telling you right now is because we took our imagination to intercession, God purified it, and it changed the future. But now, as I look at this journey we're going on, I want to lay out the framework of our faith so you can all know where we're going, okay? So everybody write this down, okay? The framework of faith. Our faith starts with imagination. Everybody say imagination. This is the spiritual womb, okay? And once we get something in our minds that we can see before we see it, the next step for you to do is write the vision down and make it plain. So the next step, it goes from imagination to vision. Everybody say vision. And vision is the receipt or the, the evidence of something in the future that is gonna come, but I got the receipt now. See, one of the things, how many people shop online right now? How many people shop online? One of the things they give you when you shop online at the end of your purchase is a receipt. Why? Because the package is not in my possession yet. But when I have that receipt, it is proof that I have paid for something now that I am going to be receiving at a later time. When you get a vision, that's your receipt. When I wrote this down 37 days after I became the lead pastor, this was my receipt. It wasn't just in my imagination. I had the audacity to write it down and it went from imagination to vision. What has God given you in your imagination that you have not been bold enough to turn into vision? I need your imagination to go to intercession, to be purified and turn into vision. Cause now I got evidence. Can't nobody tell me God didn't tell me this. I'm preaching in the building six years later that I wrote down in my daughter's room, I got the receipt. So even if it didn't happen in my timetable, I could take the receipt to the owner. Y'all missed it. There's another level of authority I have with the receipt. Y'all know how some of y'all, excuse me, can I talk to your manager, please? I was given evidence that the healing was coming. I was given evidence that I would be free from that. I was given evidence that I would be joyful and not depressed all the days of my life. I was given evidence. I need you to make good. Can't even talk about that today. Okay, imagination turns to vision. Vision, once you get vision, I'm just laying out the journey for you. Once you get vision, vision has to be fueled by faith. And the fuel of faith is, everybody say hope. hope. At least hope for it. Like, yeah. I'm, like, don't reason why it can't happen. Like, if I, if I came to you and asked you, do you hope? your family's back together next Christmas? A lot of people would start telling me why it can't happen. Well, I, I, that ain't never gonna happen because blah, 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 blah. I didn't, I didn't ask how it's gonna happen. Everybody shot at me hope. Hope to be out of the apartment. Well, I just signed a 36 month lease. First off, why would you do that? And then second off, but I'm just asking, like, would you hope for it? Because yeah. if you go from imagining it to writing it down and making it a vision and then just putting a hope for it, I want you to understand every step that we've said so far is F-R-E-E. -E. You don't need a college education to do any of these steps. You don't need a committee to agree with you to do any of these steps, to imagine, to get a vision, and to ask God to help you hope. It's free. And when you get hope, hope turns in to crazy faith. 
See, when I started hoping for this building, started hoping for what God was going to do, I started talking different. I started telling people, it's like, well, what about this? No, 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 no. Until God does it this way, I don't even want to see it. My faith got stirred. I, do you know, I live in North Tulsa. I live 35 miles from this building. Do you know how much gas, like regular glass, not hope, not fuel for my faith, like petro, like actually gas, I use to come over here and just circle the building. My crazy faith made me come into this building several times acting like I was looking for somebody and I wasn't looking for nobody. They'd be like, can I help you? Yeah, John, is John, John here? They're like, we don't have any Johns here. I was like, I know, but I'm just, I just need to be in here. And start making me move in crazy faith. Crazy faith is believing. Believing enough to do something. My question is, will you believe enough to just do something? Just something. I saw one of my friends this week after last week's imagination uh, message put this into practice. And um, she posted on uh, Instagram that she was starting a crazy faith account, an account for abundance. And within like two hours, somebody had given her $100, I think, into the account. And I said, hold on. She went from imagination to vision. She wrote it down, put it on Instagram, to hoping for it, to believing God could do it. And it happened in an hour. And at that moment, other people started giving. And God began to speak to me at that moment because faith is contagious. She don't know this, but $1,000 is hitting her cash app after service. Because God told me in that moment, y'all missed it. He said, I just needed somebody to believe me. I got resources ready. I just needed, now look at all the people right now on Instagram. You turning the thing off, trying to put it up there. Hold on. But $1,000 is going to her cash app after this. Because God told me, he said, Michael, she did all the free steps. And then she believed me enough to walk, to wait and walk it out. And that's when you go to crazier faith. I'm just giving you the progression. And what I need you to do this week is honestly evaluate where you are in this process. Because some of y'all ain't on the board. I didn't want to clown you. And I didn't want to make you feel bad. But the truth of the matter is. You're, you're somewhere over here. And it's okay, because that's where I started. I'm not going to imagine anything. I'm going to live by instinct. Do you know what separates humans from every other creation? Is that every creation that God made lives by instinct. What naturally comes up. When I'm faced with the situation, what I do naturally, what I want to do. But God said, I've given you a tool in imagination to be able to look at a situation that your instinct wants to take over and say, hold on, God has given me a picture of something different than what I'm about to naturally do. That's why when old girl walks by with a pretty face and a little waist and everything pop, pop, popping where it needs to pop. As a male, I have an instinct. Y'all want to be fake today. There's an instinct on the inside of me to say, hey, God bless you. Look what God has done through you, in you, on you. But because I've imagined myself a man of valor, Because I've imagined myself loving one woman until the day that I die. Because I've imagined myself being able to stand and my kids standing up and calling me blessed. Because I've imagined myself being able to stand in the face of temptation and be able to be somebody who passed the test. 
I don't live by instinct. I live by the imagination that God has planted in me because I have lived my life by the word of God. And the saddest thing, many of us are still living on instinct. Something happens, something comes. That's why fear grips you. They gave us a bad doctor report. What do we do? Instinct, freak out. Instinct, start calling everybody, sowing fear into everybody. You ain't even heard what the doctor said. They just called me. They just called me and said, death, bed, hospital, funeral. That's all you heard. Now you tell everybody else. And now instinct has seeped in. Now we all freaking out. Instead of living by the imagination of God, doctor calls before I call anybody. Father, you said in your word that I could speak to disease. See, y'all... It's so crazy that we come to church every day and you don't believe this stuff. Go somewhere else. Do so, like honestly, like do something else. Because until you start believing what God's word says, you only live out of instinct. But God's trying to give you an anointed imagination that then moves into a vision, that then goes into hope, that then turns into crazy faith. And then you get to a level where it's just crazier faith. Like, I didn't even believe for this. And God knew that he could partner with me. And we're about to do something that didn't even come across my mind. That's the scripture that says, eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the imagination of those who love me. I didn't even think of this. But God wanted to do something. So then I started looking at Hebrews chapter 11. I'm just taking, today I'm just teaching you. I'm taking you on a Bible study with me. This is what happened to me during the week. God said, just walk them through it. Hebrews 11 verse three. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were, everybody say framed. Framed. Underline that, circle that in your Bible. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen now were not made of things which are visible. That goes back to what we talked about last week. That God framed the whole world by words, but he did it with invisible. How did he do it? With things that weren't here? Things that weren't yet here? He framed the whole world and made it reality? It took me back to the phrase that we said, God's imagination created us. We are created in his image, therefore we can create with imagination. What are you saying? God saw it before he saw it. You have to see it. I don't know what it is for you, but you gotta see it before you see. You gotta see yourself being joyful before you see yourself actually in real life being joyful. You gotta see yourself being able to manage a lot before you see yourself actually being able to do it. Somebody say, see it before you see it. So when I looked at this scripture and I realized everything that we're looking at right now, God saw before we saw it. This word right here framed kept messing with me. So I looked up, y'all, I love the Bible. I looked up this word framed in different passages. Look at Psalms 103, verse 14. It says, for he knows our, everybody say frame. And he remembers that we are dust. So now I started doing the real pastory thing. And I went to look this word up in the Hebrew and the Greek. Let me tell you, y'all not gonna believe this. The word frame in the original Hebrew is a word called yetzer. Y-E-T-S-E-R, yetzer. Ain't never heard of a yetzer in my life. Don't know where to find a yetzer. And this had to be God. Do you know what the word yetzer means? Imagination. If you look it up, the word, it says, For God knows our imaginations. And he remembers 
that we are dust. You can see this same word in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. 1 Chronicles 29, 18. This is for all the Bible nerds that need to go study it, which should be all y'all. 1 Chronicles 28 and 9. God knows my imagination. Let me say it like this to you. Your imagination frames your life. Whatever you're imagining is the frame that God is building your whole life on. The life you have right now, you framed it. Stop blaming everybody else. It's not your family no more. You don't even live in that house no more. You are framing your life with the thoughts that you are thinking right now. And God told me to tell you it's time to change the frame. What are you saying, Pastor Michael? Let me give you an example that kind of hits close to home. This is a drum set that I want to show y'all from like uh, probably 1821. I don't even know. This mug is old. This drum set was top of the line, world-class drum set when it came out. But it only has the frame for one symbol, a cowbell, and a snare. That's all the frame can hold. This is our drummer, Tony's drum set. This mug is huge than a mug. <laughs> now I want everybody to see this real quick. This drum set is huge. It has a frame that can hold all of these that come with me because they don't even know. They seeing it from the front. I want y'all to see how crazy this little boy has gotten with this drum set. No, 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 come on back here. I, I'm, I'm exposing it right now. There's symbols everywhere. There's electronic pads. There's all kinds of stuff. There's electronic double basses. There's four pedals down here. Do you need all? What's the difference between this drum set and that drum set? It's the frame it was built on. I'm going to help him. This is what the frame of that drum set looks like. Look at this. This right here is the frame. I need somebody, camera, come on, y'all, somebody come over here so they can see this. This is big enough to be able for me to imagine. When I build my drum set on this frame, there's all kind of options. There's all kinds of toms and cymbals and everything. That's the only reason that 1921 drum set doesn't have the frame to be able to build something great. God said to me, Michael, the saddest part about this crazier faith message I'm trying to get to people is most of them do not have the frame big enough for what I want to do in their life. They don't have, they've not believed me. They haven't taken the limit off of me. And today, when I looked at that word yetzer, and it said that the worlds were framed or imagined, and that God knows our frame, our imagination. God said, Michael, the music I want to make in your life depends on the frame that you have. See, many people don't know this, but I've played drums since I was two. The difference between this drum set and that drum set on the screen is there's a lot more options here. Let me stop. Let me stop. 
Let me stop. What I was able to do and the sounds that came out and the expressions I was able to make were based on something that was built on a frame that was big enough for me to hold what I imagined. Pastor Mike, what are you trying to say? Could you imagine for more? I just, I feel like it's, the rest of the weeks for most of you are gonna be futile. If you don't get this one point, make the frame bigger. Take the limit off of God. He will not go past your belief to bring you into a place and a space that he already ordained for you. Ask the children of Israel. The promise from the beginning is I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. I'm about to take you to a promised land. These people could not believe it. These people literally was like, we want to go back to slavery. Kill the guy who brought us out. Let's worship golden calves. They turned an 11 day journey into a 40 year death because they could not get a bigger frame for what God wanted to do. And what I'm telling you right now is a lot of y'all are out here being like, yeah, if God would just do this. And God was like, that is so little. That is so low. That is so whack. You just want to be married? That's it? You don't want to impact people with your marriage? You just want to be married? That's, you just want to be able to have sex with not feeling guilty? What? You don't want to raise generation after generation after generation that stands up and changes the trajectory of other people's life? You just want to have money? Or do you want to be able to change the trajectory of communities and be able to walk into situations and not pray for it, but be the answer to the prayer? Would you just widen the frame? I, st- I feel like an alien up here preaching. Because I've been to a planet that a lot of people never get to. I started believing God for stuff that I can't say to people because it make you, it changed the way you thought about me. Now, when it happens, you're going to say I'm a man of faith. But right now, psh. Amberly, there's stuff that God has shown me in the past two weeks since we started this series. I dare not utter because it would fry the belief of people who say they believe. And I said, God, why why is this? He said, because the frame is too small. Make the frame bigger. Write that down on your piece of paper. I'm going to make the frame bigger. Because your imagination frames your life. Now, the one thing you got to know about imagination, and I told you today I'm not preaching to you, I'm teaching to you. Imagination is neutral. I want you to understand this. Your imagination is neutral. Your imagination can work for you and your imagination can work against you. Oh, but it's always working. Like, Brianna, it's uh, your imagination. Right now, some of y'all are imagining about what you're going to eat after this fast is over. Right now, some of y'all done seen the steak. You already seen the Chinese food. I have seen the Chinese buffet, the nasty, dirty one. I go in there. I love that stuff. Hey, my God, I feel it. I've imagined it. I'm there right now. Wong tongs and all. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. But but the thing you got to understand is your imagination is always working. Your imagination is neutral, though. It depends what you feed it of how it's going to produce for you. Okay, I'm trying to help you. All of this mental um, health that everybody's talking about right now, do you know where all of these mental health issues come from? Your imagination. It's taken me all this time to get here, but I thought it would be imperative as a pastor to teach you the difference between faith and fantasy. Faith versus fantasy. Because last night we opened a can of, or last week we opened a can of worms that had people imagining all kinds of stuff. 
And as a pastor, it would, be, it would be wrong of me to tell you, go out there and imagine everything in crazy faith and not tell you there's a difference between faith and fantasy. Let me give you a point you need to write down. Perverted imagination. Remember last week we talked about the anointed imagination? A perverted imagination is fantasy. And all the word perverted means is twisted. Wicked, wicked, twisted. So when you take the thing and you twist it, it becomes a fantasy. Write this definition down of fantasy. It messed me up. A fantasy is the process of creating especially unrealistic mental images in response to a psychological need. The crazy thing about this definition that I love is that it came from a real need. I had a real need to be loved. So what I did was use my imagination to make something unrealistic come into my images. And now I'm trying to live out a fantasy instead of letting God lead me in an anointed imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I know nobody talks about it, but the reason why you're in an emotional affair with the guy at work is not because you don't need to be seen or loved or noticed. It's because that legitimate need now has found a way to get twisted. And now you're imagining like, what if my husband talked to me like he talked to me? I'm just trying to tell you how it happens. What, what if we went out to dinner like as a business thing, but we just stayed a little longer and had a couple of drinks and like just talked about, just got to know each other because it will really help our work performance if you really know the people you work with. Oh, I'm in your business. I counsel these people. See, it starts very subtle. What's the difference between an anointed imagination and fantasy? It's that somewhere along the way, it got perverted. No, God told me I was going to have money. Why? Because many of us are trying to run away from something that we were born into. And God's saying, I want you to have resources so you can bless other people. But you want to have resources you, so you can make other people feel like you used to feel. Perverted. And it's become a fantasy. That's why the Bible talks about vain imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10.5. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing it into captivity. Locking it up. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. The thought can come, but you're the sheriff. And some of y'all are letting fugitive thoughts run rampant in your mind. And you have not yet locked up these fantasies. God's not going to bless you to be married to somebody else's husband. God is, you need to take that and lock it up. Y'all don't hear me right now. God is not going to bless your business with stolen money from the last place that he is not. You need to take that thought captive and cast down every imagination. God is not going to allow you to minister to people about forgiveness and you steal holding unforgiveness against them. You need to lock up your pride and you need to let God do the work on the inside of you. Pastor Mike, you preaching good, I know. Because at the end of the day, your fugitive fantasies are wrecking your life. You the sheriff just letting everybody, all these vain thoughts just run around your mind. And God said, I need you to get these thoughts under control. Romans 1.21, because when they knew God, oh, that's like us. We come to church. We know transformation. Transformation nation on set. We love God. They glorified him. They, hold on. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. We know God, but he's just an additive on our daily routine. And we're not thankful for what he's done. I got myself here. I've grinded. I, I hustled. I did all this. Okay. 
What that produces is they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Y'all didn't know imagination was this much in the scripture because I didn't know. And what God was saying, he said, Michael, if you don't tell this church to allow me to anoint their imagination and stop dealing in fantasy, they will never be able to see what I already have planned for them. There was a group of people, some of y'all remember this in Genesis chapter 11. It was a group of people that decided that they were going to do their own thing and build a tower to God. They was like, we don't need God. We're going to go ahead and get unified and build a tower to God. And look what God says. He had to come down and confuse their language for one reason. Look, it said 11, Genesis 11 verse 6, it says, and the Lord said, behold, oh shoot, these people are one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. What? God said, if I don't confuse their language, they're going to do everything they imagined to do. That means your imagination is working no matter what you do. It's either working for you or it's working against you. Let me say it another way. Your imagination is either bringing you towards God or taking you away from God. You can act, oh, I got money, but did it take you away from God? <laughs> oh, I got status, but did it take you away from God? Oh, my family is Gucci, but did it take you away from God? It's either taking you towards him or it's taking you away from him. And it starts from birth. Genesis 8, 21. I'm just giving you scriptures to study because God is planting a seed that's going to come out of your heart. As we go into this next level of crazier faith, I have to lay this anchor. What's the word of the year? What's the word of the year? An anchor makes you not drift away. And if I start unlocking these principles that God's given me as we go through these weeks, but you have not been anchored by the truth of God's word, some of y'all are going to drift out into places that there's no return from. So today as a pastor, I'm coming to let you know, right after God destroyed the entire world and then brought Noah and his family to rebuild it, Genesis 8, 21, it said, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although, God dog it, the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. What? God, what's wrong? with what's on the inside of me. Without God, we will fantasize and ask God to bless it with our faith. We'll be believing for things that God's nowhere in, never been around, doesn't have a desire to do in your life. And you're out here believing God and say, God's going to give me this, that, and the third. Some of y'all been in front of houses and posting cars that God ain't going to give you. This is not a prosperity gospel. This is not name it and claim it. This is, God, if you said it, I, I imagined it, but if I bring it to you and you give it back to me and then I walk these steps out, then I know this is going, some of y'all going to tune off right now, but I'm trying to give you proper expectation. This is not a fantasy where you rub the lamp and God becomes a genie. This is the part of it that nobody wants to teach because people leave after this. I don't care, go. At the end of the day, what God wants you to know is that he has something for you that is specific to you, that has to be purified by it being in his will for your life. All right, let me keep just moving. Can I help you understand what fantasy is fueled by? Remember that imagination, then you need vision and vision that you get hope. Let me tell you what fantasy is fueled by. Fantasy is fueled by the flesh. Anytime you start dreaming of stuff that God ain't nowhere in, your flesh is empowering that. Well, Pastor Mike, how do I know the difference between fantasy and anointed imagination? I'm glad you asked. This is what I'm going to tell you today. Fantasy is fueled by the flesh, but anointed imagination is fueled by the spirit, okay? This is why you cannot live a victorious Christian life 
without being empowered by the Holy Spirit to live out this life. And I know for some of like, what? What scripture is that in? It's in a lot of them. But this is the part where we give up control and we don't just make God our savior. He becomes our Lord. Everybody wants Jesus to save them, but they want him to save them for us to then live however we want to live. He doesn't just want to be your savior. He wants to be your, everybody say it. It's a cuss word to some of you. Lord, that means he's in control. That means I have the money to buy the house and God says, don't buy it. Huh? He said, am I savior and Lord or am I just savior? And so many people are going to make it to heaven, not obey, not having obeyed anything after they said yes to Jesus. How sad will it be for you to see the things that God had planned for you, Charlie, and never be able to reach any of them because you still want to be Lord. Today, I'm asking you to give up being Lord. Let him be savior and everybody say Lord. Lord. So that means you have to live a life that is empowered by the spirit. Okay. So, so let me just give you four things, how you know, and then we're going to end this up. It's, it's very heavy in here for y'all. Some of y'all look like y'all been baptized in pickle juice. Some of y'all is just like, whoo. At some point, this message is going to be the anchor for this whole series. We going to get out into space and then I'm going to say, go back and listen to message number three. And make sure that this is not just fantasy. Make sure this is the anointed imagination that God has given you. So how do I know, Pastor Mike? One way you know if it's fantasy or it's anointed imagination. If it does not glorify God, it's a fantasy. If it does not glorify God, it's a fantasy. Well, I just, you know what I'm saying? I believe God has given me this song for the nations called Drop That A. And I just see people all over the world lifting their hands and dropping their A. And I just feel like the Lord is like, drop that A, drop that A. And I just see, I just see, I just see, I mean, I just see them everywhere, all over the nation, just, just cellulite, just, just bouncing all over the world, white booties and black booties and Hispanic booties. And I'm telling you, it was a vision from God. I'm being dramatic, but this is what we do. Award shows, I just want to give God glory and honor for letting me be able to be here and you, what? What? I just want to thank God for blessing my sixth marriage and I got tons of kids with tens of, what? 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 You have made a fantasy for yourself. And you've started living out a fantasy that doesn't bring God any glory. I know this is tight, but it's right. Unfollow. Cool. It don't matter. Because at the end of the day, the Bible tells us that he who builds a house that doesn't build it with God, his house is built in, watch this word, vain. Unless the Lord builds the house. All your labor, all your grinding, all your working, all your awards, all your accolades, they're going to burn up. I know it doesn't work for your Instagram aesthetic because you think that God is rewarding you based on followers. He only needs you to be a follower of one. He needs you to follow him. And if... Whatever imagination you have doesn't bring God glory, it's a fantasy. When I wrote this down, this was an anointed imagination because I wasn't writing this down for me to get glory. I, I wasn't writing, all of this stuff is about other people. 
All this stuff is about God doing something that would show people that regular, regular people like me who had all kinds of problems and issues could get a vision from God and, and write it down and hope for it and all this other stuff. This was anointed imagination. But I could have easily had Michael Todd's car lot on here. Michael Todd's luxury cars. Because I want to be able to stunt on everybody with the new Beamer, Benz, or Bentley. And I'll give some people a discount. I could have made up a whole situation. I'm going to tell it myself. That's kind of a true story. I, 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 um, I can't believe I'm saying this. I researched for three weeks what it took to become a, a, a car salesman. Uh, no, not, not a car salesman. What is it? Uh, the dealer. Have, get your dealer's license. And in my mind, I thought it could be used for the glory of God, but more for the glory of me to be able to get expensive cars at a cheap rate stewardship y'all acting like like I want what the world wants but I want to keep kind of the God in the mix and maybe I can bless some it wasn't to get God glory it's so I can make you feel small because if I search my heart without the things I felt small I know nobody's teaching like this. But at the end of the day, I need you to bring everything that you're imagining and ask yourself, is this going to bring God glory? Because if it doesn't bring God glory, for you, what you're imagining is a fantasy. Let me tell you something else. If it doesn't produce fruits of the spirit, it's a fantasy. If, it might produce finances, but if it doesn't produce the fruits of the spirit, it's a fantasy. Let me go back to our trustee. Um, nope, uh, nope, whatever this is. <laughs> this worked on all the fruits of the spirit. Patience, it was five years from writing this down. Long suffering, love, I had to keep loving a group of people who was telling me that this couldn't happen. Self-control, I almost slapped our realtor several times. <laughs> Kept showing me buildings with poles. I mean, to be able to believe, it was one of the things that God is saying to you, is this working my character in you? Is this making you more like me? Because I promise you, it's not a fantasy if the fruits of the Spirit are coming out of you. It's like, why in the heck am I being gentle about this situation? I'm usually, oh, do it. Make it happen. Push it. I can't tell you how many situations I come to and I'm about to be like, and God's like, well, that makes sense. We need to wait a little longer. I'm like, that ain't you. Go back and be different. All right, bet, Mike, go back and be different. Like, talk to him about, I need us to wait and pray on the Lord. Why is this opposite? It's because this is the anointed imagination that God wants you to have, not a fantasy. Let me give you one more. If it is a birth in deception, it's fantasy. You know, no, 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 no. Some of y'all have been in a straight lie asking God to bless it. I had this guy one time come to me and ask me to pray that God would bless his new relationship. And, and I, I was like, okay, God bless you. You know, people ask me to pray all the time. I said, how did y'all meet? He was like, well, we met two years ago at my work. And I was like, okay, that's amazing. And I was like, how long have y'all been married? Well, that's the thing. Um, we're getting married next week. And I was like, okay. And I was like, um, what's going on? He's like, well, you know, I just, 
um, feel like I should tell you that uh, I'm still married right now, but, but that, that was not God. That was not God. But God is specifically in this. And how did y'all meet? Well, uh, <laughs> let me just, let's be hot, humble, open and transparent, Pastor Todd. I just want to let you know, we met on a one night stand, but as, as, as we got all of the like, uh, out of us, then God, You, you are in a full fantasy right now. You're in a full fantasy. You want God to bless the mess that you won't even acknowledge and ask him to help you get out of? You are in straight delusion. And the sad part about it is there are so many people in the body of Christ right now. They're living in a fantasy because it started in delusion. And God said, until we correct this, until we, until we go back to the heart of the matter, until we, we submit ourselves anew and afresh to God, that's a fantasy. Thank you, son. My son is saying amen. Last one. If it's all about you, it's a fantasy. If it's selfish, if it's only about you, it's a fantasy. God don't, he don't, he is not obligated to make that happen because what he's trying to do is make his name great through you to others. But many of us, our whole life is wrapped up in us and we're living in a fantasy. This is not Aladdin, y'all. This is not a genie. This is not God saying, what do you imagine? You have three wishes. No, put it on the screen because y'all know Aladdin. This is not, this is not, tell me your wish. Imagine what you can. See, all of Aladdin's thing, and I'm going to preach this in, in one minute real quick, but all of Aladdin's stuff didn't bring glory to God. He was trying to bring glory to himself. Aladdin's stuff, it was a fantasy that didn't produce the fruits of the spirit. It actually pro produced all kinds of lies, deceit. People got hurt, all kinds of stuff. I watched Aladdin this week with my kids. The, the, the things that were produced out of this, it was birthed in deception. This man said he was a king or a prince and was a street rat. And you know the thing that God wanted him to be in the palace was who he really was. God does not bless who you pretend to be. He blesses who you really are. And it was all about him, not anybody else. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? I want us to not live in fantasy. I want us to again submit our anointed imagination and get the right framework and allow God to do something in us that will change us forever. I'm going to read a long passage of scripture and then we're going to go home because this ends this message. Galatians chapter five, verse 16. It says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves or your fantasies crave. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. That's why it's faith always versus your fantasy. It's always fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Look what gets birth. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit, everybody say, but the Holy Spirit. Say it one more time, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your life. Love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus, that's us, have nailed their fantasies, have nailed their desires, have nailed their passions, their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. What's your last point, Pastor Mike? Faith doesn't work for fantasies. If the Spirit of God is not leading you to it, He's not going to make it come to pass. Pin drops. Why? Because this means we got to go back to him to check our motives. Why do you want it? What is it going to do for you? What does it feed on the inside of you? Does it bring God glory? Are you trying to do something that makes you look better? This thing is all about Jesus. What I've had to do, I'm going to be very transparent with y'all. I am in a metamorphosis. I'm in the middle of changing my whole life. I got to sit down for this because I can't believe I'm telling y'all. I'm your pastor is somebody that has always wanted to do more, greater, big, amazing. And the Holy Spirit has been asking me all summer, Bishop, why? Why do you, why? Why do you want it bigger? Why do you want to, why do you want to go on crazy faith tour? Why, why do you want a book every year? Why do you want it to be this? Why do you want it? To, he has been, I, y'all, it feels like I've been in a strainer all summer. Y'all like, I, did y'all pray for me while I was gone? Cause I, I, it, it was like, it was like, get up off me. I thought this was all for you. And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. But some of you been mixed in there. And I don't want you to get up here telling everybody about crazy or faith, promising them something I didn't promise them. I, the reason I had to preach this message is because it is the exclamation mark of something God's doing in my life. And I promised y'all would never get up here and teach you something that God has not already been working in my life. This is the first version of this. But what I know is that a lot of the things that Michael believed God for were fantasies. And the reason why a lot of things did not happen is because I was praying for something and believing for something that was not in the will of God for my life. And I was disappointed and frustrated at God at times because he didn't do what he said he was going to do for me. And he never promised to do it for me. I made it up out of my vain imagination. God never promised me that all my kids would be healthy and whole. That's what I thought. That's what I prayed. He didn't say I would never go through any challenge with my family he but the pastor should be able to be an example he said I'm making you one I'm gonna show you how to believe me and he's giving me promises and now I gotta go back and make sure I'm I'm founding my anointed imagination on the promises he gave not just what I desire this is hard to say y'all But I don't want to lead you to a place of fantasy. God's going to do this. Then he's going to do this. Then he's going to do this. Then he's going to do this. And God's like, nope, nope. Didn't say that. Never was me. They ain't even pray about that. I'm trying to bring us to a place of maturity, church. There's a lot of people out here saying, name it and claim it. Just put your feet on the ground and it's going to happen to you. And there's parts of that that is real. Like, I believe it. But the only way that I believe it is I make sure it's not fantasy first. I make sure that I'm not just going around saying stuff that brings me glory. Saying stuff that allows me to look like I know what I'm saying or doing or all that other stuff. No, this is all about God. So what do I do? Hebrews 12, 2, fixing our eyes 
on Jesus. This whole summer, this is the hardest message I've preached since I've been back. Not to communicate, to preach and know what it's killing inside of me. What do you do, Mike, when some of the things you wrote down on your crazy faith board were fantasy? <laughs> and I know it may be easier for me to act like no, God does everything I put my mind to. That he does it. And I don't want you to think that God's goodness is wrapped up in his gifts. I don't want anybody to think that, oh, God's not good because he didn't do what. No, that's not true. He's still good. Despite whatever I see in my life. He still, despite me having loved ones be lost because of sickness, he's still good. This is a level that we're going to pump you up next week and I'm going I'm to help you see what God has for you. But I felt it'd be really irresponsible if, it, if I didn't live this out in front of you and let you know that God does not want you to use faith for fantasies. He wants you to come to him and take all your imagination, bring it to him in intercession, let him purify it. And whatever he gives you back after that, believe with all your heart for that. The things he showed me about my son, I'm believing with all my heart for that. The things that he placed in the word of God concerning me, I'm believing with all my heart for that. But anything that I made up and threw in there, hoping that he would add it in. You know how when somebody's ordering a bunch of food from like a fast food restaurant and they just start throwing stuff in and then give me some donuts and a McFlurry and then just give me, give me, y'all got cookies, right? Then throw in some cookies. It ain't nowhere on the order, but it's like, and then could you just give us, y'all got slushies too? Get a slushy, a large Coke. And like, it's like, where did, I'm not paying for all that. I asked for a number one with a Sprite. You, you, can, you can do all that if you want to, but you're going to have to hold that up. You're going to have to make that happen. What I'm responsible for paying for is what I ordered. The steps, the steps of the righteous are what? Ordered. By who? The Lord. Check the order. Make sure that as we start believing in crazy faith, that we're not believing for fantasy. Everybody say, I'm believing in faith. Lord, I did to the best of my abilities what you asked me to do today. You said be real and authentic about this journey. And God, as people are evaluating what they've said, what they felt, and what they made up. God, I'm asking you to be so gracious and correct, confirm, or cancel anything we've been believing for that's not like you. Whether it be in a relationship or a business or a material thing, or, or a deeper revelation or a position or a platform, whatever you did not say, we give it back to you. And we're willing to sacrifice this because God, we don't, we don't want to live in a fantasy world. We want to live in crazy faith. So God, I'm praying for those who are hearing this today, that as they spend time with you, that you would give them clarity. Come on, just lift your hands right there. God, right now we're praying for clarity. Ooh. I thank you, Lord, you're giving us clarity. Should we go? Should we stay? Should we move, Father God? Should we stay planted? Give us clarity, Father God. Should we have the conversation? 
Should, should we just write it in a letter, Father? Whatever it is, God, should, should, give us clarity, Father God. Let every vain imagination be torn down in our lives. Anything that would exalt itself against the knowledge you have for us and where we're going and our will and your will for our lives, God, I just thank you. Today, I thank you for the privilege to pastor your people, to lead them to you. As we do what Hebrews 12, 2 says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Thank you for this spanking, Lord. Thank you for this surgery. We know it's a surgery because it comes to heal us. Thank you, Lord, that in my life I'll be able to lead this church in transparency. And Father, we don't lead them to crowds and things. We lead them to your throne. Thank you for the word you gave us today. We will be spirit led. In Jesus' name. Everybody all over the world say amen. amen. Okay, listen, 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 listen. I want us to get used to different dynamics of the Holy Spirit. I told y'all I'm changing right now. So like, I just need everybody to know, like, we ain't never ended a service like this. It's usually like, ah, ah, ah. there'll be more services ending like this. Because I want you to go home and say la. Pause and think. Is this car I'm driving fantasy? That I willed and forced and now the payment is killing me? And I'm asking God to make a way for something he never wanted? I, like I want us to, I want us to say la. And I do believe that what we're about to do in this crazier faith series is grow. I promise you, if you stick with every sermon of this series for the next nine weeks, 10 weeks, I don't know how long it is, that God is gonna speak something to you. It's gonna transform your life. That last scripture I said, fixing our eyes on Jesus. There are people in this moment right now who've never accepted Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. And I need everybody who knows how to pray, I need you to start praying right now. Because this is what it's all about. It's not about things, it's not about positions, it's not about all this. It's about a loving God who didn't have a fantasy about us. He had an imagination about us being together. And so he sent his only son Jesus to die on a cross just for me and you. And took me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography, had all kinds of bad things in my heart and made me not a perfect man, but a progressing man. It's the dude who's standing here before you right now who can tell on himself, that can go to God, can admit where he's wrong. Didn't just make him my savior, but made him my Lord too. And today God wants to do that for you. I don't care what addiction you're in. I don't care what pain you are going through right now. I don't care how far you feel from God and how disappointed you are. God is in pursuit after a relationship with you. And the crazy thing about him is he's not going to stop knocking. He's not going to keep coming. He's not going to stop coming. So today, today is the day of salvation. I don't care how you watch this. And because somebody told you about it or this is playing in a public place or somebody sent you the link, this was purpose for your life. And today, this year, over 32,000 people have given their life to Christ. But this moment is just for you. In just a moment, we're going to all pray a prayer together. And if you want to be in included in the prayer of salvation, I want you to just lift your hand on the crown of three. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I'm proud of you, but that don't even matter. Your name is about to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Three, just lift your hand up wherever you are right now, in the auditorium, online, wherever you are. God sees you. I'm so excited for what's about to change. Now at TC, we're a family. Everybody prays together for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. And your life is about to change. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Come on, TC Nation. Let's pray this together. Say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I believe that you lived and you died just for me, for my sin, for my fantasies, for my mess ups. 
Today, I ask you to be Lord and Savior. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power just for me. Come into my life. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Transformation Church, can we give God... Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Can we give God a shout of praise for every person? Oh, come on, heaven is rejoicing right now over every person. So proud of you. I want you, if you just made that decision, to text the number, text SAVE to the number on the screen. And our team is going to send you some information to help you. We're going to help you live this life out in crazier faith. I want to say this uh, real quick. Um, I love pastor in this church. And I'm grateful for what's about to happen in you and through you. I want to say thank you to TC Nation. Um, I was going to say it at the top, but God just did a whole bunch of other stuff at the top. But um, because of us rallying around this message of crazy faith, um, the book officially, I found out, went number four on New York Times bestseller. That, no, that's a huge deal. A huge deal. Huge. And I just want to say thank you, man. He is so good, y'all. And we're proving to people in spheres that don't care nothing about the church. They don't care nothing about our faith. They're buying these books and handing them out to boardrooms and taking them to, like, it's different. We're just getting started, Transformation Church. And I believe that God is going to do something specific in us and through us. This week, run this message back two times. Everybody, how many times? At, at least. Because it was like, you know when there's something you taste for the first time and it's an acquired taste and you're like, mm, mm, mm. And then it's like, hold on, that was kind of good. And then you go back and then, and by the third time, it's like, can I get some more of that? This one, you're going to have to run back two times. Because by next week, we'll be in a place to then receive the ability to go to crazier faith. But without an anchor, we float away. Today, I'm asking you to go out and live a transformed life. I love y'all. Let's give God one more big shout of praise. Hallelujah. I'll see y'all next week.